Alright, welcome back everyone. This is part 6 of my Utility AI tutorial in Unity series. In the last part, we set up the response curves needed for considerations by using animation, Unity's animations curves. And in this part, we will be creating the movement logic for our little NPC so that it can start navigating around based on its decisions. But before we get started, I think it's important to note here that if you haven't realized yet, we actually have completed building our prototype utility AI since part 4. Remember at the beginning of the series I explained that the core of utility AI is just the logic to rank and pick out the best action that a game character can perform given its perception of the game world at any given time, right? And we built all those scripts needed to do that, right? We, we have an AI brain that handles all the calculations. We have the base action class defined. We have the base consideration class defined. The um, adding the eat, sleep, work actions and now throwing movement on top of it all is actually just using our prototype utility AI in the context of a specific game application. In this case, in the context of a village simulation, where the NPC is using utility AI to do villager things. I could have very well chosen to do something like a fighter game, where instead of uh, eat, sleep, work, the actions were uh, attack, defend, and usability. And it would still be using the same exact utility AI scripts we coded out. The reason why I'm stressing this point is that I want you guys to realize that all these different AI systems, uh, such as finite state machines, behavior trees, GOP, utility AI, they're all just frameworks to guide your AI designs. That's what a framework is. It's just there to give you a basic shape to craft your creation around it. There is no one right way to implement these AI systems, okay? In fact, the movement for our villager uh, NPC here can be done in two different ways. One is a pure utility AI approach where we can define and code out the considerations and actions for moving. But what you'll quickly realize when you start doing that is how complicated this pure utility AI approach actually is. And in case you're curious, I'm going to give you a taste of that complexity right now by showing you the table of considerations and actions we would need to code out for the pure utility AI approach. Okay, so if you're going with the pure utility AI approach, then it is highly recommended. It's not even recommended. It's a must that you uh, develop a table of considerations and actions like I did here. Okay, so you can see that I have all the available actions listed horizontally on top in purple. And all the considerations that go into those actions laid out vertically in red. Okay, and then in the table itself, I labeled the consideration type that a consideration will be for a particular action it is assigned to. So if you read downward for each column, right, you'll see that all you'll see all the considerations that go into an individual action. For example, the sleep action, you can see it will have three considerations: the do I have a sleep destination? Am I at sleep destination and the energy consideration for sleeping. And then for, let's say, the work action, it only has two considerations. The am I at resource destination and do I have energy to work on resource consideration? Okay, and so on for all the other, other uh, actions. Now, if we read the table horizontally, you'll see all the different actions that one consideration is involved with. For example, let's take a look at the do I have a sleep destination consideration, right? Reading across the table, you can see that it's a consideration for the search for sleep destination action, for the move to sleep destination action, and for the sleep action, right? Nothing else, just those three actions. And you'll see that for the search for sleep's destination action, the consideration is evaluated as an inverted bool, whereas for the other two actions here, it's evaluated as a normal bool. Okay, so what, what does that mean? Well, by default, if a consideration evaluates to true, then that corresponds to a score of one. And when a consideration evaluates to false, that corresponds to a score of zero. That's the conventional correspondence between true and false and one and zero. 
So I call that the normal bool. It's evaluated normally. Okay, you, when true means one and false means zero. For the inverted bool consideration type, it's the opposite case. When this consideration, do I have a sleep destination, evaluates to true, then it corresponds to a score of zero. And when it evaluates to false, that's a score of one. And this distinction between the scoring of bool consideration is important because these different actions, the search for sleep destination, the move to sleep destination, and the sleep destination, or sleep action, they interpret this single consideration differently, okay? One interprets it as an inverted bool consideration, and the other two interpret this consideration as a normal bool type of consideration, okay? Now, I don't know about you, but having to think through just this by itself is already making movement for the NPC a huge headache for me, okay? Because you have to keep track of all the considerations and then what ac what actions they're paired with, and then for each of those actions, they're interpreted differently. So that's a, that's a really complicated way of doing movement, and I highly recommend not doing it this way, even though it's possible. In fact, my first successful implementation of, period of utility AI for villager behaviors was going this route, and um, I still make mistakes setting up these considerations correctly to this day, even though I've been working on this stuff for like a, about a year now. So I highly, highly recommend not doing movement this way, even though it's possible. Instead, I recommend that we use the same approach that GOP uses to control NPC movement. GOP actually uses a very simple finite state machine to move NPCs around, and it looks something like this. There's a decision state where the NPC does all the GOAT calculations to determine what actions it should be performing to reach a goal. And then there's a move state that the NPC enters once it has a plan. And in this move state, the NPC just moves to the destination it needs to reach in order to perform the selected actions. And then when the NPC reaches its destination, it enters the execute actions state where the NPC just starts running the actions contained in the GOAT plan. Okay. Now, we can set up the same finite state machine for utility AI by simply dropping in the frame, our framework into that decision state, where all our fancy utility AI calculations are performed to select the best action and the destination in this decision state. And then the move state will just take our NPC to the pre-selected destination, and the execute state will just run our best action when we're at the destination. So you can already see that this way is what, much easier to understand conceptually compared to the pure utility AI approach, where we had to juggle all of those confusing action consideration pairs. And there's nothing wrong with doing things this way, right? As I said in the beginning of the video, these, this, these AI frameworks, they're just frameworks. That doesn't mean that you, they're set in stone that you have to do things in a specific way. Just because you're using GOP or utility AI doesn't mean that you have to strictly stick to utility AI and GOP only and you can't use the other frameworks. Here, we're leveraging the power of the simplicity of finite state machine so that we can uh, design the movement of our villager AI very simply, uh, while still utilizing utility AI to drive the, the important decisions about what actions it should be doing at any time, okay? Now, you're about to see even more how easy it is to set this up in code, this whole finite state machine to control the movement, okay? So let's get to it. All right, so here we are in our original um, untouched villager setup here, right? With all our old code still here, okay? And this finite state machine will be running in our NPC controller class. See, it's so simple that we don't even need to create its own script for it, okay? We literally just build it into what we already have, okay? So we'll first build in the finite state machine into this NPC controller, and then we'll worry about tying everything else together, okay? Remember, just code out, code things out, and then go back and fix all the squiggly red squiggly lines that pop up, okay? So in our NPC controller class, we are going, we are no longer going to be using um, all this stuff here, right? This update and this update method, we're just, I'm just going to comment these out. I'm gonna comment these out. Um, and we're simply going to basically have 
a one method fsm tick boom right there and then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and define what that method is that method is our finite state machine okay and note that this is um, the simplest way, simplest and fastest way to set up a finite state machine. Because we only have three, three states, three very simple states, we can do it this way. Um, it's not the most efficient, of course, but you know this is a prototype, and we just want to get something up and running quickly. And then we can, and then you can go back on your own to uh, really do finite state machine the way you want to do it. Because there's a couple different ways to do finite state machines, and this is just the simplest one for very simple uh, setups. Okay, so, well, first let's go ahead and define the states that are available um, for this FSM. They are, as we already mentioned before, the decide state, the move state, and the execute state. Okay. And now we can just go ahead and do our simple checks of what state we're in and then whatever state we're in just do what that state's supposed to be doing so we'll say current state is equal to the state of decide are we in the state of decide um, else if we're in the current else if we're in the state of moving then do all our movement logic in here and lastly if we're in the execute state then just do our execute uh, execute our best action right okay so let's go ahead and define this current state variable up here call it state current state it's set all right now let's let's think about what happens in our decide state if we're in the decide state then that's where we will be running our uh, utility AI calculations right so we already have a reference to our AI brain here so let's just go ahead and call our AI brain to do utility AI stuff right so we're just gonna say AI brain dot decide best action boom okay and direct squiggling line because we have to go back and modify our AI brain eventually, okay? But this is basically what we want to do. In our decide state, we want our AI brain to go ahead and decide the best action, okay? And then after that, we do a check to see if we can move to a different state after we do all our current state stuff. So we'll check if our AI brain is at its required destination position and then we'll just say uh, a distance of two right so if you if you're already at your required destination then go ahead and switch the state to our state execute Otherwise, let's go into the movement state. Right, move to the next next uh, move to the required destination. All right. Now, let's go and define the stuff that happens in the move state. Right, in the move state, we basically just want to check to see if we are at our required destination. So. We'll do a distance check here really quick. And if, if we are within distance of our uh, required destination to do our best action, then we can go ahead and switch our state into the execute state. Okay. Otherwise, 
um, tell our move controller to move our NPC to our desired location. Okay. And then last but not least, uh, let's define what's going on in our execute action, execute state, right? So in our execute state, we're going to need to check if um, our AI brain has finished executing a uh, its best action, right? So we're gonna we know that we're gonna need some sort of uh, variable in the AI brain that says finished executing that keeps track of whether or not it has finished executing the best action. And set this to false. So if it's not finished executing the best action, then go ahead and execute. And recall that our execute method for best action requires an NPC controller. So there it is. And if we are finished executing best action, set this, or yeah, if, if, if we are finished executing, then go ahead and go back into our decide next best action state boom and there you go that's literally our finite state machine in order to properly move our npc around in the game world while still leveraging the power of utility ai to decide the important stuff like should it be working should it be sleeping should it be eating should it be doing this or that okay all right so now, now that we have our finite state machine all built out, let's go back and make sure that all these variables have been um, defined and fixed. So we know that we're going to have to make a lot of modifica some modifications to our AI brain. Let's look at this first decide best action. Okay, so we see here that decide best action currently requires a list of available actions. So let's go back to our AI brain and fix that. So you can see that our actions available the way we set this up before was that actions available was actually attached to our NPC all right so instead of attaching it to our NPC let's actually move our actions available into the AI brain okay so we're just going to go ahead and take this guy remove it from NPC controller and put it in AI brain so we're going to have to define these actions available in our AI brain So now we can go ahead and remove this required input parameter into this method. Cool. Yep, so action available is referring now to this internal list of actions. And then since our finite state machine is now controlling uh, when to run this AI brain calculation stuff, then we no longer need this in our met update method. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, comment this out here. Okay. And then let's see what else needs to be fixed. We need a required destination um, parameter in our best actions objects that belong to our AI brain, right? So let's go back to our best action or action class and define one. Let's see here. So we'll just define a private transform. Um, what did we call it? Required destination. Required destination. Like that. What that means is that in our action actions, we have to define what this required destination is. Or rather, we have to implement the logic to seek out a certain destination where it, can, it needs to be in order to run this execute method, right? So 
That means in our in our work, sleep, and eat class, we also need a, a, a another method that says, um, you know, let's say set required destination. So since it's going to be common across all the different actions, then we can just create another method here, another abstract method that says abstract void uh, set required destination and then we'll also give it the npc controller like that and now in our work in our um action class and our inherited action classes we will go ahead and implement that method right for example in the work right so that means public Okay, so in the work action, right, we need to we need some logic to identify what resource is this NPC going to work at to do this work action at. Okay. And the easiest way to do that is let's look at our our um, village setup here, is that we simply just look through we, we cache this we we cache the locations of um, resources into some sort of you know common list, and then this NPC can just go through and identify which resource is the, the the nearest to to its current location, and then it'll go and work on that. So let's go ahead and add a couple more trees, and then just move them around in this you know place them randomly in the scene. Okay, so now we have some resources scattered randomly throughout the scene, and like I said, the logic for um, set required destination is simply just going to loop through a list of resources and identify the closest one to the NPC's current location. Okay, and these resources will be cached in this con context class here that I um, made ahead of time to store information about the game scene. So you can see here that we have a list of resource destinations, right? Um, stored into this list. So our NPC can just have access to this context class and grab this list and then uh, identify what uh, resource is closest to its current destination. So let's do that. So you can see here our NPC controller has a reference to this context class, right? This context class is just uh, contained in an empty game object, and it holds all the information about this uh, about the environment in its uh, class right now. And our NPC controller has access to the context class with this reference here. And that's how we're referencing, we're grabbing these destinations, okay? And now we can go ahead and implement the logic for identifying the closest one to the NPC. Okay, so this for loop basically identifies the closest one to the NPC, and now now that we once we have it, then we just set our required destination equal to the nearest resource that we found. Okay, there you go. So now required destination is equal to we set it to the nearest resource that we found. There you go. So that takes care of the work action. Now we have to do something similar for the sleep action, right? For the sleep action, it also needs to implement this set required destination. So for the sleep sleep action, we also have to implement the logic to set the destination to the the, how, the home, right? The place where it goes to sleep. 
Um, luckily, in the scene, we only have one home currently, right, for this NPC. So we simply just need to look up what the transform is of this home in the context class, right? Our context class, which stores the data about our our, our vil little village. So we literally just go acquired destination. Oops. Like that. And it's very this simple because we only have one one little home for our, our NPC. You can imagine a case where you have many NPCs and many homes in the scene, right? Then you would have to actually um, store the information about the different homes and uh, which home belongs to the NPC. But it's just uh, setting the required destination for the finite state machine is a simple uh, lookup, right? Look up what home belongs to the NPC and just set it to its required destination. And then for the eat, um, it eat actually doesn't need to right because eat happens instantaneously in our little village simulation here it doesn't need to go to any place to eat currently because this is just a prototype village simulation so it literally just eats where it stands um, that means we don't need to implement this anything in this method okay all right now we're not quite there yet we need to go back and fudge a little bit more with our AI brain so our decide best action has been fixed, and the change we need to make is here. Once we find the best action, right? Remember, the decide best action does this whole logic of identifying, scoring all the actions, and then identifying the action with the best score. Okay. Now, after it defines the action with the best score, it needs to also set what the required destination is. And that's where we call this set required destination method. And there you go. So if it, 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 it scores all the actions, it finds the best action, and then it, it identifies what is the required destination um, for this best action to happen at. And then we can finish up, uh, set, finish up deciding and printing out to our um, UI. All right. And then in our start method, we will initialize this finished deciding to false. So at the very beginning, it hasn't decided anything, right? So it's, and then let's see what else we need. Um, oh, okay. So messed up here, right? You can see required destination is still throwing squiggly line because uh, I forgot that this needed this required destination in our action parent class needs to be public so that anything some stuff other stuff can access it. So we'll make this public. Get set. Um, actually, we'll make it a get protected set. So that means that anything else outside of the action class and all its children classes. Anything else that is not an action class will be able to access this required destination. But only actions, only stuff that inherits from action can set this uh, required destination variable. That's the point of the protected set. Let's just make sure that our, yep, our classes are still working. Save that. There you go, that fixes that. Our NPC controller um, is able to access that. And then the last thing we need to fix is this AI brain finished executing best action variable, right? So in our AI brain, we need to include a parameter that keeps track of whether or not it has finished executing. So we'll add it in right here. then we will also also initialize it as false and I believe that should take care of our 
finite state machine and tying it in with our utility AI. Oh, nope, still gonna need to fix this. Um, remember, we, we no longer need to provide an actions available because it is no longer um, being supplied by our NPC controller class, but rather our AI brain. Let's see here. Everything else looks good. Now, let's go into our inspector and take a look at the actions in themselves and set them up correctly. Utility AI. Our actions. Our actions are still good. Oh, um our NPC that we need to look at. So you can see our NPC controller no longer has the list of available actions, but the AI brain has the list of available actions. Now let's go ahead and define our available actions. Eat, sleep, and work. And then we also need to define a drop-off action, right? Because we never actually implemented the drop-off resource action. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's implement a drop-off resource action. And in our drop-off action, right, when we drop off resources, we're literally just standing at the storage and then we empty our inventory. So let's put a debug message here that says drop off resource. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and Call this method, which I predefined, remove all our resources from our inventory. And when we do that, we get some money. Our NPC gets paid. Let's say 20 gold. And then we set our AI brain. Finished executing best action equal to true. Okay, um, now that just reminded me, we need to add this line to all our other actions. So whenever, when, when the action is finished, then we need to set this finished executing best action to true. Okay, so let's go back here. We can see that NPC, the logic for doing work is here um, in this coroutine to do work. So let's go to that coroutine. And it's in the work coroutine here. So instead of finished best action, we now are just need to implement this. Just need to set the finished best action uh, bool to true. And we do the same thing for the um, sleep action. Okay, uh, so that takes care of this. And then remember, uh, because this is a drop off resource, it has to drop it off at a storage location. So we need to implement the um, set required destination method here. And just like in the sleep action, right? There is only one storage location in this scene right here and the and the context class has that stored in its variable if we look at context here yep storage is stored here so we simply just need to set our required destination to that storage variable in the context so we'll say required destination 
is equal to Okay, so we're almost done. We're almost done. Now, in our action, we set the required destination, but there's nothing that actually sets, tells the move controller to what this destination is, right? So we actually have to tell what our move controller that, hey, we have a new destination for you. So in our actions right after we set our required destination we simply need to set the movers destination to required destination that way at the end of every decision on what the next best action is our mover is updated with the destination information Okay, so I think that should take care of everything. We have our finite state machine here, a very simple FSM tick method that checks what state we're in and then performs the, the all the logic for it to be in that, that needs to go on in that state. Um, we have our required destinations all defined in places where they need to be defined. Our finished executing best actions have been initialized and set in the actions themselves. Uh, eat also needs this, right? Basically, we don't need this unfinished action anymore. We need to just call. We need to just directly set finish best action to true. Okay. So. I believe that's all we need to run things. Let's go ahead and give it a test drive. Let's see if we have any errors. Nope, no errors. All right, let's give it a play test. Okay. Forgot that there's no nav mesh agent yet. Yeah, the move controller is trying to access the nav mesh agent, which we have not put onto the game object yet. We have our nav mesh def identified already, but we don't have a nav mesh agent. But the issue is that you can see here, I have put all these scripts onto the NPC parent object here. And if I try to do this, nav mesh agent, you can see that the nav mesh agent is weirdly placed in a way that it's like slightly above our NPC. And the way to fix this is to basically, instead of putting all these scripts on the parent NPC uh, game object, we're going to put it on the body of the actual body of the NPC. So let's go ahead and remove all these and put everything on our NPC body. So we'll first put in our nav mesh agent. There you go. And you can see now the nav mesh agent is on the body of the NPC and not the parent NPC and game object. So this be to five, the rotation to 200. Now let's add in our scripts to the NPC again. Controller, move controller, inventory, stats okay there you go and now one cannot be a villager without a brain that's just silly and then let's add our actions Uh, 
And then we also have to create a new scriptable object for our new action, right? Our um, drop off resource action, right there, boom. Our drop off, our consideration for drop off resource uh, needs its own set of consideration, which is how full is my inventory, right? Let's go and code out this how full is my inventory consideration. We'll put it right here. How full is my inventory? Okay, so how full is my inventory? It's a curve uh, consideration, right? It, it basically, there, there's a spectrum. So we have to evaluate how full is the inventory. Uh, and it's not gonna be you know, a true or false, it's actually gonna look at the value, how, many, how much stuff is in the NPC's current inventory. So we're gonna need a animation curve. And then our score is going to be equal to um, how much stuff is in our inventory. Inventory. How full is storage? So you see here, I have a method inside our inventory class defined already that does this calculation for us. Okay? And then we will return a school, our score. Okay, let's go back and create the scriptable object for that consideration. How full is my inventory? And we'll define the animation curve as we did in the previous episodes for the other uh, considerations. So we know that when the inventory is close to full, then dropping off becomes very urgent. So I'm going to go with a curve that kind of looks like this. This should be... And I'm going to move this... I'm going to add a key here. When it's half full, um, we'll say that it becomes 0.75. Or, no. When it's half full, it should not be as urgent. I want it to be a little less urgent even though it's half full. So it's going to be 0.35, something like that. Yeah. So how full is my inventory? Well, when it's, when it's half full, it's not that urgent yet. But once it starts getting over here, once it starts getting full, then it becomes the, the consideration becomes very urgent. Okay, and then let's go ahead and attach this to our uh, drop off resource consideration. Full is my inventory right here. There you go. And now we can go back to our NPC and add in the drop off action. There you go. So now let's see if it works. And we have a working NPC, guys. Look at that beautiful NPC just moving around. You can see here, I forgot to add in the uh, text update to uh, note. So it's getting stuck here because we, why is it getting stuck here? Well, because we probably didn't set reset one of its uh, variables, right? One of its finite state machine variables. Eight hours later. Okay, so after some debugging, I uh, finally found where the mistake is. It was just uh, literally one liner that we forgot in the AI brain code, okay? So let's take a look at what, what's causing this issue where it just gets stuck here. Well, in the code, 
Um, you see this this finish ex executing best action, right? At the end of every execution, uh, we set it to true. But there's nothing in the code anywhere that sets it back to false so that it actually will trigger um, the, this execute uh, method. And that's that's why we're that's why we're we were seeing our NPC just get stuck when it would try to go drop off resource resources. Um, there's since there's nothing changing it to f back changing this back to false, then it just continues on being true, which means it just constantly switches back to decide state, and then once it gets to the decide state, it, it because it never executed. It never dropped off the resources, then it just automatically keeps coming back to this. Uh, yep, I finished executing because this is always true. So I'm constantly deciding that I need to drop off resources, but I never actually drop it off. So how do we fix that? Well, in the AI brain, literally just one line. Before we decide the next best action, we have to set that uh, reset that variable that we finished executing best action equals to false, right? Because since we're deciding the new best action, the new best action has not finished executing, right? So, once we do that, we should be able to see that the NPC is now uh, moving correctly. Doing the actions and then, there you go, finished farming. And there you go, he dropped it off, and then he immediately went to work again on the next nearest tree. And then he's dropping it off again. Going back, there you go. So now we have a working villager simulation where Utility AI drives its um, decision on what actions to perform, and then the finite state machine simply controls its movement, moving to and from destinations in order to execute its uh, desired actions. And it's just going to continue on this loop behavior forever and ever because it has everything it needs to do uh, to, to decide its actions. Let's go ahead and randomize the initial stats so that we can start seeing some dynamic behavior here. All right. So he starts out with pretty high energy, so it's going to be a little bit before he, it goes down to the point where he needs to rest. We can even move these resources around, right? Like, let's say, let's, let's move this guy here. Let's be here, so that it is the new nearest resource. There you go. So you can see he moved to the nearest resource to start farming. He should be getting tired about now. Close to getting tired. So you see that it's throwing an, a null reference exception because the destination for eating was not set. So I guess I was wrong. We actually have to go into eat and we have to implement the set destination um, and set it to itself, right? So set required destination and we'll set it, the NPC's destination to itself. So there you go. His first action was to eat, and when he's done eating, he's dropping off resources. Okay, and you can see there, because he's loaded with gold, he doesn't need to work, so he can afford to go sleep right now.
to replenish the energy. There you go, and once he replenishes his energy, he's back to just farming because money, he loves money. And this is just going to continue on and on and on because and it's constantly just evaluating, using Utility AI to evaluate its needs and um, what actions it needs to perform. And that just drives its villager behavior. Finance State Machine to control movement, Utility AI to control to decide what actions it will be performing at any moment. Okay, so that was painful to edit. Uh, I felt that the presentation was a bit sloppy, but I think it's still good to see how people debug issues. So I hope it wasn't a total waste of your time watching me get, getting this up and running. The video is already way too long, so I will save the conclusion remarks for the next and last video of this series where I will talk about the pros and cons um, of this prototype AI and give suggestions on how you can expand on it for your own projects. I'll show you guys how um, I branched off of this prototype AI to also uh, to start building uh, a more complex village and what my vision is for such a simulation. Thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you in the last video. Have a great rest of your day, game devers.